This is the Maternal Newborn Exam 1 Concept Guide. Trends Currently Influencing Maternal Child Care An Expansion of Community-Based Services Accidents are a leading cause of injury and mortality in the school age population, and therefore education focused on this topic would be considered high priority. What influences the changes in the types of care required to support maternal child health issues? This is families are smaller with a higher number of single parent families as well as moms working outside the home. And when planning care, consideration must be given to these structural shifts. Phases of menstrual cycle, proliferative, secretory or luteal, ischemic, and menses. Proliferative is the first four or five days of a cycle. The endometrium or lining of the uterus is very thin, approximately one cell layer in depth. Secretory or luteal phase. Formation of progesterone and the cortis luteum causes the glands of the uterine endometrium to become corkscrew or twisted in appearance and dilated with quantities of glycogen. It takes on the appearance of rich, spongy velvet. Ischemic phase. Fertilization does not occur. The cor corpus luteum in the ovary begins to regress after 8 to 10 days and therefore the production of progesterone decreases. With the withdrawal of progesterone, the endometrium of the uterus begins to degenerate. Menses. A menstrual flow is composed of a mixture of blood from the ruptured capillaries, mucin, fragments of endometrial tissue, and the microscopic atrophied and unfertilized ovum. Menses is the end of an arbitrarily defined menstrual cycle. Conception can occur two to three days before ovulation to one day afterwards. Contraceptive options, hormonal and non-hormonal. Hormonal is progestin only pill, combination oral contraceptive, Levon Ordrestrel releasing IUD, NuvaRing, Nexplanin, Depoprevera, Depo and Transdermal Patch. Non hormonal is natural family planning, copper IUD, and barrier methods. Depoprevera is a single intramuscular injection. Progesterone is given every 12 weeks, inhibits ovulation, alters the endometrium, and thickens the cervical mucus so sperm progress is difficult. COC is combination oral contraceptives. They regulate menstrual flow, and the disadvantage is daily use and possible thromboplevitis. POP is progestin-only pills. It's coitus-independent. Disadvantage is daily use. Next, planin is an implant. It's good for five years. The disadvantage is irregular bleeding. IUD, non-hormonal, is copper and hormonal is um, regular, and there's no memory needed. The disadvantage is cramping, irregular bleeding, and possible expulsion. NFP is natural family planning, and this method involves identifying the fertile period and avoiding intercourse during that time every cycle. Barrier methods, spermicide. Advantage is ease of use, and the disadvantage is annoying vaginal discharge. The male condom is advantage is it protects, protects against STIs, and the disadvantage is it requires interruption of sexual activity. Female condom advantage is it protects against STIs. The disadvantage is difficulty of insertion. The sponge advantage, easy to insert, disadvantage, leaking, and danger is TSS. Diaphragm advantage is easy to insert, and the disadvantage is danger of TSS. It is essential that a diaphragm fits snugly in the vagina, blocking sperm from entering the cervix. Factors that will influence this might, fit, might include significant weight changes, increase or decrease. Cervical cap. The advantage is it can be left in place for several days, and the disadvantage is the cervix, cervical irritation and TSS danger. STI and treatments. So the treatments is syphilis, penicillin G, intramuscular injections. Chlamydia is Zithromax, one gram by mouth, one times a day. Gonorrhea is ceftriaxone, 250 milligrams intramuscularly once, and then Zithromax, one gram by mouth. 
HSV is a cyclovir or Valtrex by mouth three times a day for five days. Tricon Manas is Metron Diazole, 500 milligrams by mouth, BID, twice a day, I think, except for seven days. Must sustain from alcohol during treatment. Bacterial vaginosis is Metron Diazole, 500 milligrams by mouth, BID, seven days, same as above. <coughs> Candidiasis is Terconazole vaginal cream inserted nightly seven times, and then Diflucan, 150 milligrams by mouth once a day. That's in the second trimester. So the STI symptoms and testing. So for HSV, it's asymptomatic lesions, and it's genital to genital. HIV is a retrovirus, and it attacks and causes destruction of T lymphocytes, immunosuppression, and the testing is EIA, enzyme, immunoassay, western blot test, or immunofluorescence assay. Chlamydia is a bacterial infection caused by chlamydiotrachomatis, most common STI. The lab test is endocervical swab and urine culture. Gonorrhea is a bacterial infection spread genital to genital, anal to genital, or oral to genital. Neisseria gonorrhea. The lab test is endocervical swab, urine culture, and anal or oral cultures. Trigonmonas is the most curable STI. The incubation is 4 to 20 days. It causes genital inflammation, and the lab test is microscopic exam. A vaginal discharge. Tri Tricon monads appear as rounded structures. Syphilis is caused by Troponema pallidum and it can have a long term complication if left untreated. There's three stages and it's transmitted oral, vaginal, or anal. The primary stage is a chancre, lymph node edema, and lesions. The secondary stage is skin rash macupapular rash on hands and feet. In the tertiary stage is damage to internal organs, difficulty coordinating muscles, and blindness. IUD, how do they work? It's prevention of implantation, induction of an inflammatory response. Effectiveness is greater than 99%, and the contraindications is abnormalities in uterine shape, such as bicornate uterus or uterine septums. Strategies for smoking cessation. Follow a designated smoking cessation plan. Ask the MD if any medications can help and get a friend involved in the plan. Benefits and importance of folic acid supplementation. It's preventing the development of ONTD in babies. 2020 health, national health goals for pregnancy. Stop smoking and alcohol use. Eat a healthy diet. Take PNV take folic acid, achieve optimal nutrition status prior to conception. Positive and probable signs of pregnancy. Probable signs, abdominal enlargement. Heger's sign, the softening of the lower uterus. Chadwick sign, violet, bluish color of cervix and vag vaginal mucus. Goodell's sign, softening of cervical tip. Braxton Hicks contractions positive pregnancy test. Positive signs, fetal heart sounds, fetal movements, and visualizations of fetus on an ultrasound. Appropriate communications between families regarding pregnancy and new baby. These are siblings need to feel comfortable that they are not being replaced and that the family is simply growing. Avoid taking items away from the sibling to give to the new baby. How to calculate EDC from LMP. It's LMP minus three months plus seven days. That equals EDC. Fetal development stages. The embryonic stage is from two weeks until eight weeks of life. During this time, organs are mainly formed. During the rapid cell division and forming of organs, if exposed to viruses or drugs, this can harm the fetus. Fetal development stage is defined from the ninth week until birth. GTPAL statement from an OB history. G is gravidity. T is term burst, 37 weeks or more. Preterm burst from viability up to 37 weeks. A is abor abortions and miscarriages prior to viability. And L is for living children.
As you read through the question, record each pregnancy or delivery under the appropriate letter as a check mark. Add them up and finish your parity statement. What changes occur to breast tissue during pregnancy? Darkening of the areola, sometimes accompanied by itching. Breast enlargement, this is mammary glands, and preparation for lactation. What causes urinary frequency during the second trimester of pregnancy? The enlarged uterus is now putting pressure on the bladder. Know what the expected fundal heights should be for a gestation. Also know that deviations could imply and what action would be appropriate. We assess fetal well-being at each visit by assessing the following, fetal movement, fundal height, and FHR. Fundal height at 12 weeks is symphysis. At 20 weeks, it's umbilicus. After 20 weeks, the fundal height should correlate in centimeters to the number of weeks gestation. If it is, possible IUGR or ogliohydraminose, which is baby is not growing or there isn't enough fluid. If it is, possible macrosomic infant or polyhydraminose, which is too much fluid. This could indicate that the baby has congenital malformation. If the baby is moving less than usual, this could be an indication of some sort of insult and the fetus should be assessed and monitored. Labs in early pregnancy. First trimester is one to 12 weeks. This is labs for blood type, RH, antibody screen, CBC, RPR, HEP, B and C, HIV, GC and CT, and urine drug screen. Second trimester is 13 to 27 weeks. The labs are typically drawn together between 24 and 28 weeks. This is where you repeat the CBC, HIV, one hour glucon, glucose tolerance, and repeat antibody screen if RH negative. Third trimester is 28 to 40 weeks. Group B strep, which is GBS, culture at 36 weeks. MSAFP, what does it test for? Maternal serum alpha theta protein. It tests risks for trisonomy 13, 18, 21, and ONTD. Genetic testing SCA and CF. These both are autosomal recessive. Each parent must be a carrier of the gene or mutation in order to produce offspring with this condition. The normal weight gain in pregnancy, so underweight is 28 to 40 pound gain. That's one pound per week during second and third trimester. Normal weight is 25 to 35 pound gain, and that's one pound per week during second and third trimester. Overweight is 15 to 25 pound gain, and that's 0.6 pounds per week during second and third trimester. Obese is 11 to 20 pound gain, and that's a half a pound per week during second and third trimester. Effects of smoking on the growing fetus. Development of smaller placenta. Placenta ages more rapidly in SGA babies. Amniotic fluid functions. So the functions are cushions the fetus and protects against mechanical injury helps the fetus to maintain a normal body temperature, allows for symmetrical fetal growth, prevents adherence of the amnion to the fetus, aids in fetal musculoskeletal development by providing freedom of movement, and it's essential for normal fetal lung development. What could variances represent? Hydraminose or polyhydraminose, is more than 2,000 milliliters, and while the cause is unknown, it is associated with significant congenital abnormalities. If the fetus is unable to swallow, which is esophageal atresia or anencephalopathy are the two most common reasons, excessive amniotic fluid or hydraminose, more than 2,000 milliliters in total or pockets of fluid larger than eight centimeters on the ultrasound will result. It may also occur in women with diabetes because hyperglycemia causes excessive fluid shifts into the amniotic space. Ogliohydraminose is less than 500 milliliters. Less fluid is less room for baby to move. Fetal urine adds to the quantity of the amniotic fluid. This disturbance of kidney function may cause ogliohydraminose or a reduction in the amount of amniotic fluid. 
What is surfactant? This is a liquid made by the lungs that keeps the airways or alveoli open. An unborn baby starts to make surfactant at about 26 weeks of pregnancy. It prevents alveoli from a cl- it collapsing on expiration. When do moms feel first fetal movements? Primigravida is 18 to 20 weeks and multipara is 15 to 17 weeks. How was the fetus oxygenated while in utero? The placenta and placental perfusion. How do we assess nutritional history? We give a recall of the foods consumed in the past 24 hours. Iron supplementation. Physiologic anemia of pregnancy or pseudoanemia due to increased plasma volume that dilutes hematocrit and hemoglobin. The normal mean hemoglobin level in pregnancy is 11 to 12 grams per deciliter of blood. Should encourage adequate hydration with six to eight glasses of water each day and increase the intake of protein and iron via dietary sources. Sometimes mom will need an iron supplement in their parenteral vitamin, prenatal vitamin, PNV. What impact does a restrictive diet have on the nutritional needs of the growing fetus? Consider vegetarian and vegan diets. They may require certain vitamin and nutrient supplementation, for example, B12. However, the lifestyle can be safely maintained if these considerations are addressed. What is the first line management or recommendation for GERD in pregnancy? Small frequent meals will prevent gastric overdistension. She should also avoid lying down immediately after meals as this will promote the risk of reflux. What is hyperemesis gravidarium? What are the goals and the care of this patient and how would you measure that? Hyperemesis gravidarium is persistent vomiting unrelated to other causes. It's a measure of acute starvation, usually large ketonuria and some discrete weight loss, most often 5% of the pre-pregnancy weight. It often requires short-term hospitalization for hydration and electrolyte replacement, as well as nutritional supplementation and stabilization of the symptoms. It differs from the typical nausea and vomiting that affects 70% of pregnant women and the extent of the physiologic effects. For these patients, we want them to be able to achieve stability of their nutritional status, hydration, and electrolytes. We also want them to be able to consume the necessary nutrients via their diet. Within their plan of care, the nausea must be managed in order to facilitate tolerance of clear liquids progressing to soft diet and eventually returning to tolerance of a regular diet. What is supine hypotensive syndrome? In the supine position, the weight of the uterus compresses the vena cava, reducing the blood return to the heart and resulting in decrease in blood pressure. This results in decrease in perfusion to tissues, and the symptoms may be dizziness in mom and non-reassuring reassuring fetal heart rate, late decelerations in the fetus. Which maternal positions will facilitate fetal oxygenation? Left side lying lateral, never supine. What is the purpose of Rogam? Rogram prevents the development of sensitization, which is antibody formation in RH negative moms carrying an RH positive baby. It should be given during pregnancy at around 28 weeks, as we do not know the blood type of the fetus. Given in pregnancies that end early via spontaneous or elective abortion, again, we do not know the blood type and the RH of the fetus, and it should be given within the first 72 hours, 72 hours postpartum to moms who have delivered an RH positive fetus. Non-stress test. When performing an NST, what are you assessing and documenting? The FHR baseline, variability, presence of accelerations. This is where the heart rate rises 15 beats above the baseline for a duration of at least 15 seconds and absence of decelerations. To be reactive, there must be two accelerations that meet criteria within 20 minutes of each other. If not reactive after 40 minutes, biophysical profile. Biophysical profile. What are the components of a biophysical profile? Fetal movement, fetal tone, fetal breathing, amniotic fluid, and NST. 
Each receives a score of 0 to 2 points for a total of 10. The ultrasound total is a max of 8. Early decels, fetal head compression. Deceleration occurs simultaneously with contraction. The nadir aligns with the peak. Late decelerations are caused by uteroplacental insufficiency. Onset of the deceleration occurs after the beginning of the contraction and the lowest point of the deceleration, or nadir, occurs after the peak of the contraction. Variable decelerations. This is cord compression and intrauterine resuscitation. FHR variability. Variability is absent at 0 BPM. Minimal is greater than 0 and less than or equal to 5 BPM. Moderate is 6 to 25 beats a minute. That's normal. Marked is greater than 25 beats a minute. The potential cause for non-reactive NSTs can include hypoglycemia, problems with utero placental insufficiency, decreased placental perfusion, and maternal medications and drug use. Also remember what each type of fetal heart rate deceleration is caused by and what actions we should take. Early decelerations may be fetal head compression, so that may indicate that the baby is descending and maybe the nurse should check her cervix. Variable, variable decelerations could be caused by cord compression. The nurse will want to first change the maternal position to increase perfusion to the baby. If this does not resolve the deceleration, proceed with the steps of intrauterine resuscitation. Late decelerations are the result of uteroplacental insufficiency. Follow the steps of intrauterine resuscitation, and if you are giving Pitocin, discontinue the Pitocin. Intrauterine resuscitation. It's appropriate actions and interventions by the labor and delivery nursing team in the presence of fetal distress or non-reassuring FHR pattern. Reposition patient, usually lateral position, increase rate of IV infusion, administer oxygen via face mask. The purpose is to increase oxygenation and perfusion to the patient. Reposition is shifts the weight to allow for change and distribution to facilitate blood flow. IV bolus speeds the rate of oxygen transport. An oxygen hyperoxygenate mom, mom's oxygenation directly impacts baby's oxygenation. Bleeding in pregnancy, potential causes, placenta previa, placental abruption, cervical dilation, and infection. Vaginal bleeding during pregnancy is always a deviation from the normal. It is always potentially serious and may occur at any point during pregnancy and is always frightening. You must always be carefully investigated because it can impair both the outcome of the pregnancy and the woman's health or life. If unsure of placental previa, do an ultrasound. Review the causes of vaginal bleeding in pregnancy. Remember that with any vaginal bleeding in pregnancy, the placenta is always a potential cause and therefore must be evaluated for position and location and presence of abruption. Other potential causes could be cervical changes related to hormones that increase the friability of the cervix and cervicitis related to infection. Details that will allow you to narrow down and focus on the possible cause regarding are placental causes. Placental abruption is painful, rigid abdomen. The contractions are every one to two minutes, dark red bleeding, and NRFHR. Placenta pre previa, painless, bright red bleeding, soft abdomen, may or may not have contractions. FHR and fetal movement may be stable. Placenta previa. Placenta previa is an improperly implanted placenta in the lower uterine segment near or over the internal cervical OS. Mm -hmm. Nursing assessment of placenta previa includes sudden onset of painless, bright red vaginal bleeding occurring in the last half of pregnancy. The uterus is soft and relaxed and fundal height may be more than expected for gestational age. Nursing interventions include monitoring VS, fetal heart rate, FHR, and fetal activity. Ultrasound, avoid vaginal exams, bed rest with sideline position, monitoring amount of bleeding, treat, treat for signs of shock if present, IV fluids, blood products if needed, or tocolytic medications. Plan for a cesarean if heavy bleeding. 
First action of assessment and placenta previa. Assess the baby. How? You assess the fetal heart rate. What interventions would you expect to provide to the patient in preterm labor? What medications would be given? The two main goals is stop contractions and optimize fetal status prior to delivery. Stop contractions. You're going to hydrate, bed rest, and administer tocolytics. You're going to, for optimized fetal status, administered betamethasone for fetal lung maturity. Testing and preterm labor, fetal monitoring, contraction monitoring, urinalysis, and fibro, fetal fibronectin. The medications for mom is tocolytics, nifedipine, terbutaline, and magnesium sulfate. For baby, it's betamethasone or dexamethasone. What are tocolytic medications used for? We give tocolytic medications to women when we want to relax the uterus or stop it from contracting. We would give this in the instance of preterm contractions or labor in the pregnancy with a viable living fetus. We would not typically give once they reach term or in cases of fetal death. Tocolytic medications include terbutaline, nifedipine, and magnesium sulfate. What physiologic changes might we expect with epidural placement? How do we prep the, how do we prep the patient? Hypotension. We prep for this by administering a bolus of at least 500 milliliters lactated ringers prior to the procedure. <clears throat> the stages and phases of labor. Patient must be actively contracting. First stage is from 0 to 10 centimeters. This is the longest stage. Latent phase is 0 to 3 centimeters. Slow cervical change. These are mild contractions and more widely spaced. Active phase is cervical change of a half to one centimeter an hour. Contractions are longer, 60 seconds, and more frequent, two to three minutes. Transition is more rapid cervical change. This is one to one and a half centimeters per hour, and the contractions are longer, 60 to 90 seconds, stronger and more frequent every two to three minutes and may start to feel pelvic or rectal pressure. The second stage is fully dilated, pushing, and delivery. The third stage is after delivery of the fetus through placental delivery. No risks faced by the post-term fetus. Macrosomia, respiratory distress, and meconium aspiration. What is om, omphalocele? This is a birth defect of the abdominal wall or the belly. The infant's intestines, liver, or other organs stick outside of the belly through the belly button. The organs are covered with a thin, nearly transparent sac that hardly ever is open or broken. Why? Intestines fail to return to the abdominal cavity after maturation and development. Gestational diabetes. What is the greatest risk to the fetus in gestational diabetes? Macrosomia. This is an increases, it increases the risk for birth trauma, which is solder dystocia. It also impacts fetal blood glucose regulation following delivery. You also need to understand nutritional counseling for the patient with gestational diabetes. This is appropriate carbohydrate and protein intake, appropriate caloric consumption, and the recommendations for, recommendations for exercise is maintain active plan of exercise. Do not initiate a new strenuous plan. Stick with low impact. Know that the energy consumption will be increased during exercise. Eat an appropriate carbohydrate-sustaining snack prior to exercise. What are the potential effects of elevated blood glucose during the first trimester? Its link is to congenital abnormalities affecting the CNS, musculoskeletal system, renal system, CV, and GI. What is glycos glycosuria a possible indication of? What testing would be indicated? Glycosuria may be an indicator of a gestational diabetes. Further evaluation is indicated via assessment of serum, HGB, A1C, fasting blood glucose, or GTT. What conditions will amniocentesis detect? Amniocentesis will allow for analysis of fetal genetics. 
It will assess for disorders directly related to genetic alterations or chromosomal abnormalities such as trisomy 18, Edwards syndrome 21, or which is Down syndrome, trisomy 21. What is gestational hypertension? How does that impact nursing care? Consider the vasoconstriction associated with hypertension and how this will impair perfusion to the tissues. Nursing care will be aimed at improving the tissue perfusion. What are our goals and interventions in caring for the patient with preeclampsia? Goals is prevention of injury. How do we get there? Bed rest, reduce stimulation for decreased seizure risk, pad the side rails to protect from injury, administer magnesium sulfate for seizure prophylaxis and deliver the fetus. <clears throat> Considerations and expected orders for the patient on magnesium sulfate. Remember, the patient is receiving magnesium sulfate for preeclampsia or preterm labor. She is on strict bed rest. Always use an infusion pump for administration and run the medication piggyback, not as the main line. Monitor pulse, blood pressure, respirations, and ECG frequently throughout paternal parenteral administration. Respiration should be at least 16 a minute before each dose. Monitor neurological status before and throughout therapy. DTRs note changes. Institute seizure precautions. Pad the bed rails. Have suction available. Keep the room quiet and darkened to decrease the likelihood of triggering seizure activity. Monitor eyes and nose. Urine output should be maintained at a level of at least 100 milliliters per four hours. Serum magnesium levels and renal function should be monitored periodically throughout administration of parenteral magnesium sulfate. Have 10% calcium gluconate available should toxicity occur. Administer 10 milliliters IV over one to three minutes until signs and symptoms are reversed. Provide one-on-one -on -one nursing care for women in labor who are receiving magnesium sulfate. What is HELP syndrome? Hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelets. Fetal presentation. How does this impact delivery? Vertex presentation is optimal for vaginal delivery. Breach, face, or transverse presentations are not. Brief, breach presentations are A frank and B complete. C and D is footling. Be aware of pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic pain management options for laboring women. Pharmacologic is IV and IM opioid medications, epidural and pudinal block. Non-pharmacological is hydrotherapy, massage, birthing ball, and breathing techniques. What are some exclusion criteria for epidurals? Anemia, thrombocytopenia. So consider that patients with these conditions may not be safe candidate for an epidural. Hint, recognize diagnoses that are characterized by the, these conditions. 